this morning. Do me a favor, stand to your feet all over the room. Let's worship the Lord together. Come on, clap your hands like this, y'all. Come on, y'all. Everybody clap your hands in the room. Come on. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, we will bless you at all times. And your praise shall continually be in our mouth. I said his praise is going to continually be in our mouth. Somebody make some noise for Jesus in the room. Hallelujah. Come on, say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy.
been too good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can't stop praising. So I can't stop dancing. You've been too good. Oh, say, Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. Yes, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. Sing, Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're of the Lord to rise up in this room real quick. Say, give me all four on the floor, please. Right here. I need the army of the Lord to rise up in this room because we about to take territory in this place. Anybody here tired of the devil messing with you? Tired of having his hands on your stuff? I dare you just like the kingdom suffering violence for you to get mad enough at the devil to take your stuff back. I got two in the room. Do anybody else want to go with us? We're going to take it back. Hey, we're going to take it back. Hey, we're going to take it back. We're going to take it back. Y'all say what we say. We're going to take it back. 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 Let me hear y'all say it. Everybody say it. We're going to take it back. 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 Take your mind back. Take your peace back. Take your joy back. Take your joy back. Hey, take your mind back. Hey, take your joy back. And take your peace back. Say it. Say, we're going to take it back. 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 Hey. We're gonna take it back. 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 Take your mind back. Take your joy back. We're gonna take it 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 back. That's all right, we just got off beat for a second. But God is still great. He's still good. Now shout it one last time. One, two, three. Say we're gonna take it back. 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 The kingdom suffering violence.
rush this place right here. This is a good place for you to worship the Lord. This is a good place for you to reflect right here. Reflect on His goodness. Reflect on His kindness. We will reflect on your goodness. We'll reflect on your kindness. Oh. We, will re we will rejoice for you have made shout right here by myself if I have to. Is there anybody in this room that's experienced some rough moments in your life and you can say, God, I thank you that you didn't let me stay there. I will rejoice for you made me glad that you, you turned my sorrow into joy. You turned my mourning into dancing. for you. for you have made me glad. I will rejoice, I will rejoice for you have made you have made Stay right there, Lawrence. That's good. I will rejoice for you have made me glad. Go 
time for tears. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I feel somebody needs that in the room this morning. That the joy of the Lord is the thing that's going to allow you to make it through this uncomfortable season in your life. The revelation that says that the joy of having the Lord is our strength. It's not that the situation, ooh, yes, Lord, I hear you here. It's not that the situation changes. It's having the Lord changes my response, Auntie Terry. It's having the Lord that changes my response in this season. God says change your response in this season. Some of you are so heavy. The Lord says your response is what's going to give you grace out of this situation. Woo. Instead of tears of sorrow, I'm going to cry tears of joy. My expectation is going to go up to a greater level. Except the name of Jesus. We say, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness true. you to sing it with us all over the room. Say, Jesus, say, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, the silence fears. The silence fears. Say it. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, the silence fears. One more time. Say, Jesus, 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 you made the darkness tremble. Oh, Jesus, the silence fears. Listen, your name is a light the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, your name is a light forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome let's declare all over the room Thank you. 
on, can we worship him together? Sing. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, is the power. yours is the glory forever. Come on, lift your voice and declare, sing yours, 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 yours is the kingdom, is the kingdom yours is the power. Is the power. What a beautiful name is. What a beautiful name is. The name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. What a beautiful name is. Nothing can stand again. Nothing can stand again. What a beautiful name is. What a beautiful name is. The name one more time, y'all. Sing it all over the room. Sing. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful name it is. Sing, nothing can stand it. What a beautiful Savior, you are Lord, and you are Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. At the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim that you Just rest in that name for a second right here. Rest in the name of Jesus. All that you need is in the name of Jesus. Everything that you need is in the name of Jesus. Peace is in that name, yes, Jesus. 
love is in that name. Restoration is in that name. Joy is in that name. Healing is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Freedom is in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody just lift your hands and call on the name of Jesus right here. Come on, I dare you to fill this room with his name. Fill the room with the name of Jesus. For at the name of, hey, yes, God, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are God. Just start.
you need is in the name of Jesus. All that you need is in the name of Jesus. All that you want is in the name of Jesus. All that you want is in the name of Jesus. All that you want is in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. Say everything is in the name of Jesus. something in the room if you help us say it. I wish we was in old school church. If I was in old school church, I'd say, for he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. And he lives
those hands. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. was speaking to me on my way here, and I just want to, uh, if you can have your seats, I just want to let the worship team know that this will be a place where you can flow. Um, for those of you, you shallow believers in the, in the back who's struggling with worship right now, it's because you haven't been spending time with Jesus, and it's hard. I could pour water on you, but you got to know how to drink, and Freedom Church is a worshiping church. I wish I had two people. Freedom Church is a worshiping church, and uh, we don't let nobody do something for us. We go, we do, we join in. We jo we worship together, and so uh, so one, one thing that's going to be important for me to communicate to our community is we will be a worshiping church. But it's going to be hard for non worshippers to hang around. And I, I'm not I'm not being I'm not being confrontational. I'm just trying to stir you. That, that most of us in here today and in general, when you go home, wherever you're going to be, we think that the struggle is money, marriage, all this external stuff. But the struggle is we got to be worshipers. When God went looking for somebody in the scriptures, the Bible says he went looking for a worshiper. He wasn't looking for no other titles. He wasn't looking for mamas, daddies, sisters, and brothers. The scripture says God is seeking such. He's looking for somebody who's going to worship him. And I know it's not popular in this particular time. I'm about to move on. We're going to get ready to do our baby dedication. But I know it's not popular in this time. People don't think worship works anymore. They don't think worship works. Folks don't think prayer works. You don't think singing works. You don't think, listen, worship and prayer and praise still works. It still works. When you clap your hands, you're not just clapping your hands. You're making a sound that heaven can respond to. When you sing, when you dance, you are making movements that heaven can respond to. It still works. Worship, when you shout to God with the voice of triumph, it still works. Praise still wins battles. Praise can heal your body. Praise can turn your situation around. It still works. I got to move to the dedication. I, I, I heard the Lord on my way. I'm sorry, uh, production team. Can I come down to this dedication? I'm doing a baby dedication. Yeah. They got to go. I can't do it from up there. I, I, somebody, just look over somebody and say, say, it still works. It still works. It still works. It still works. And some of you been... You've been restricting your praise like this, like, Lord, I can't. Because we don't make praise look, because praise ain't cute no more. Somebody say, Freedom Church is a worshiping church. We, go, we going in. Look at somebody say, we going in. We, we going in. We can, God can do some stuff if we worship right and the temperature get right. He'll do some stuff you ain't even prayed about. I got to go, y'all. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Some stuff, you when you get some glory on it, when you get some glory on it, you you ain't going to have to figure it out. I'm just, I got to move. I got to right, You just look, look one last time. I'm probably going to do the baby dedication. Look over, look, look over somebody and say, you need some glory on that. Yeah, you need some glory on that. That financial thing you're trying to figure out, you don't have it. Yeah. But I know who got it. Just put some glory on it. All right, let's go, y'all. Listen, I'm trying to help your spirit. I'm trying to lift you up. I'm trying to give you the key to a breakthrough. You ain't going to be able to cry for this one. You got the praise for this one. This one. This, this next breakthrough, you're not going to be able to whine for it. God says, I'm trying to see where your worship at. I'm trying to see where your praise is at. This next breakthrough, you can't pay for it. You're not going to be able to buy it. You're going to have to put a praise in the bank. You're going to have to lift your hands. You're going to have to open your voice.
I have the, uh, I feel the anointing. I'm, a, I'm not going to play with y'all. I'm not playing with y'all. I'm going to play with y'all. I'm just, I'm, I'm about to move on. I'm just wondering if there's anybody in this room that's, that has a 911, like if God, don't, you don't move today, lift your hands. Lift one hand. Just show me a bit. Wait, wait. I dare you, if you in a 911, jump on your feet and shout Jesus. Just, no, no. no. Uh, sit, sit down. You didn't do it right. Sit down. Sit down. We're going to sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Here. See, uh, I feel it in you. I feel it, Vic. I feel it right here. I feel it. I wish I wish there was 13 more people who said, this thing I'm working through, only God can help me. When I say go, you jump on your feet, lift your hands, and shout, Jesus. Go, 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 go. Freedom Church, we're about to enter a season of revival. And uh, my assignment in this season is to is to press you into your praise. Um, man, Vicky praise lets me up. When she starts saying, you can do it, God. 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 I know it's few of you who think I'm crazy right now, but you can do it, God. I, I know I know it's some folks who can't get in faith with you right now. I'm wondering if there's a few people who can say, you can do it, God. You can, you can do it. I'm gonna. We got to move on. I think it's a good time while anointing's flowing. We do this baby dedication. Hold on. Uh, I got to move. I got to let the man of God preach today, y'all. Listen, one of our own. I'm going. I'm going to say it before we come. Terrence Constantine is sharing with us today. He may say it in his message, but I'm gonna say it. This man of God has been a man of God since been a man of God. And he has not had the opportunity and privilege and space to share in 10 years. Freedom Church, you get the chance. I felt something in the apostle to you. I felt we're about to see God break out in one of our own. So I want y'all to prepare your hearts uh, as he comes. I'm excited to have him share. Listen, let me bring the... Darden, the Callaway, Gentry family, please come and bring precious Emini Shanice Tucson. Come on in. Imani, oh, thank you. Thank you. Good, good. You know, I know how to read phonetics. 
I should have put the long E in the sh- Come on. <laughs> on the next baby dedication, make sure I put the, you know, the, phon- the phonetics on it, you know, for my educators. So. Man, privilege and honor. It's a large family. Y'all come on around. Come on in here. Dedication of a child is a very holy, sacred, special moment, and I want to read you a scripture uh, from Mark. Y'all cute. Give you African attire. Look at you. Come on. I'm going to read a scripture from the gospel according to Mark. It says, and they brought to him young children to Jesus that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those who brought them to him. And when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. He said unto them, suffer or allow the little children to come to me. And forbid them not. Don't stop them. Uh, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, who shall not re- though, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he or she shall not enter therein. And they, he took them up in his arms and put his hand on them. Let's pray. Father, we present Emily, Imani, let me get it in the thing here, Imani to you as a gift from these parents who in gratitude having received her, now give her back to you. We are mindful this day that Jesus called little ones to his fold. He places his hands on them and he blesses them. He, threw, he throws his arms of love around them and he gives his children the kindest gift. We know something of the cravings in the heart of a child, their innocence and cry for purity, its weakness and a cry for strength. A child's helplessness is a cry for protection and a child's heart is a great plea for love. We ask that Imani would grow in wisdom and in faith. Preserve Imani when danger threatens her life. Undergird and strengthen Imani in moments of youthful temptation and lead Imani back to Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To the congregation, just you don't have to stand. You are privileged to witness the coming of these parents to dedicate their child gracious to the gracious and loving care and keeping of God our Father and Christ our Savior. God grant that we, the church, who are gathered here to worship, will earnestly assume that these parents, will earnestly assume with these parents the responsibility for this child's Christian training in so much as all of us exercise influence upon the child in some way. These parents are in this family. If you, the members of this church and community, are willing to do so, we ask that you pray for Imani. 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 I got it right now. See, I said it wrong too many times that I messed it up. (laughs) Might be led in her years of personal accountability to follow Jesus and come to what that which is true. Parents, as you present Imani for dedication to God, we ask you, are you willing to rededicate yourselves to the maintenance of a Christian home? Where Christ shall be honored and the word of God held in reverence so that Imani may on her free, in her free time and only free choice, confess her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as her personal Lord. If you do so, you may only say amen. We'll hear from you. Because you recognize the spiritual, physical, and moral responsibilities of parenthood and your dependence upon God for strength and wisdom to faithfully discharge the duties of parents, Do you now present your child in dedication to God, seeking divine blessing and guidance for her life? You can have five seats, thank you. All right, bring the baby to me. Hold on, Imani. Hold on a second, it won't take us long. Emma, Emma, 
Somebody say, do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Why don't y'all parents take one hand and lay it on the body. And then, family, why don't you get behind and lay your hands on the pastor. Yeah, just hold on in mind. Hold on one second. All right. Just hold on. Hold on. Just hold a little bit. Help me, help me. She will. Just be mindful of that. It's your own doing. Lord. I lay my hand on Imani <laughs> and dedicate her to God. Will you lift her up? Lift her up a little higher. Lift her up a little higher. That's it. Jesus, this is your baby. Imani belongs to you, Lord, for purpose for ministry, for the kingdom. As our hand is laid upon her now, give this family, this extended family, this church community, the power, the wisdom, the wherewithal, the lead, by the leading of the Holy Spirit and the anointing to incubate her life. Use her for your glory. We offer her back to you. Christ, we give you praise and thanks. Mm. We impart blessing and favor, even from as, as even, if, even as she enters into the next season of her life, from infant to infancy to toddler to to Lord. We just want to release favor upon this baby, God, that you are going to give her supernatural intelligence, genius, wisdom. We release supreme giftedness into this child. Lord, we, we, we push her into the realm of intelligence, of a genius. We declare in Jesus' name that the way she's going to process and think, God, the, 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 the industries of science, technology, we impart that to her even now. Mathematics, we impart it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Come on, clap those hands. We're going to finish this last piece. They got the certificate. Thank y'all. Just hold on. It's a holy moment. This certificate, this certificate of dedication certifies that Imani Shanice Toussaint, upon the faith of legal guardianship and prayers of the elders of the church, has been dedicated to Christ and is hereby awarded this certificate this day. Freedom Church International, signed by Elder Administrator and Pastor. If you want the certificate with you guys, we want to just charge the family to incubate this family like never before. Incubate this child. May she never want for anything. Well, she won't. So I just want to thank you. I think that's my last piece. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We love you. Get a picture later, you're good. Thank you, family. We got through it. Friends, I'm going to ask if you would stand and receive our brother and clap for him and shout for him as he comes to preach the gospel to us. Please receive Minister Terrence Constantine. They depart, they have a new life. Let's just say that. I would thank God if you could stand with us. Thank you. Let's pray, family. Let's just pray. Y'all can, can be seated.
is giving honor to God and you to each other. So can we get us started by being silly and learning a little bit? If, if you ever not been saved, we will appreciate it when you are. And just start giving honor to God. Um, I thank God for my mom. I thank God for you. I thank God for Brandon. Um, our senior pastor. I said our senior pastor. Pastor Terrence Samuels, come on. Oh, we can do better than that, friend. Let's show him we appreciate him. Hallelujah. We thank God and for him and the gift of God that is in him to lead us and to be the next generation of the Lord we have for the body today. Um, it is the third Sunday in July. And I don't know about anybody else, but being the third Sunday in July, I'm just happy that I survived. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if there's anybody else in here that has been through as much as I have over the last three years, but I, I believe that on top of the COVID, when you mix it with the, all the people that are buried and when you add in everything that we've been through, I'm just happy to say it's the third Sunday in July and God's on the throne and I'm happy that I survived. I, it, it didn't look like it sometimes, but I made it. I just need you to touch yourself in the chest and say, I made it and I'm going to keep making it. Ain't nothing going to tear me down. I'm, I'm going to make it on every cost. I made it. I need a church that say I made it. It's the third Sunday. You ought to be happy. It was a time, Apostle, when we couldn't come worship. We couldn't gather. We didn't have an opportunity. The enemy had locked us down, but I, we made it. It's not going to be take too long, but I do. I labor, Father, in other words, uh, for those of you all who have your Bibles, um, if you could stand with me for the reading of the word, we're going to be coming out of Genesis chapter 32. going to start at verse 24. If you don't mind, we'll go ahead. It's been like um, <laughs> Genesis chapter 32. We're going to start at verse 24. And as Pastor Terrence said, it's been about 10 years since I stood behind this desk and let you let you hold it. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with the reading of the scriptures. And it said, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is your said Jacob and he said thy name shall no more be Jacob but Israel for as a prince has thy power with God and with me has thy prevailed and Jacob said him and, and Jacob asked him and said tell me I pray thee thy name and he said therefore it is thou doest as my name. And he blessed him here, there. If I could use for my text today the tag, what is this fight all about? You can have your seats. 
if we be honest, the last three and a half years have been horrible for most of us. We didn't experience more transition than we expected. More has happened than we wanted to. We weren't ready for some of the transition that we were going to go through these past three years. Some of us encountered car accidents and some of us buried loved ones and over the past three years even within the last six months some of us have run into situations where our body has been under attack and our mind has been under attack and our finances have been under attack and we see a battle on every hand we 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 we, we are encountering situations that's causing uh, us to just be like you know what I don't know what's going on it's so much transition around me. I don't know what's next. I just don't know what's going to come on next. I, I, I can't, I didn't see this coming and I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to see what's ahead of me coming. And so some of us have got to a place where we have just locked up in fear. We have locked ourselves up in fear. We're trapped in our mind. We've, and I can't talk about nobody else. I use myself for example. Uh, 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 in the last three years, I buried both of my grandparents. I saw, I, then I got in a car accident and ended up in the hospital and broke my leg and lost my job and uh, I lost a vehicle. Don't nobody want to talk about how hard it really has been in the last three years to hold on to the reins of my mind. It ain't been easy. I wanted to give up. I wanted to throw in the towel. I wanted to not come to church. Oh, we, we you, you ain't going to tell me about it, but I know I didn't want to come to church, Apostle. I was tired of the church. I was tired of going through. I was tired of it all. Somebody say, what is this fight really all about? Why am I in this battle? When we understand Jacob, Jacob is not necessarily a confrontational person, Pastor Janice. The Bible says in chapter 31 that when he begins to describe Jacob against Esau, he describes Jacob as a plain man. I, I really ain't no person to be doing no whole lot of fighting. When you look at his history, most of the time Jacob was a conf uh, uh, addressed with conflict. He ran. Uh huh. When he was in the when he was in the uh, 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 a battle with his brother Esau, and he had stolen his birthright, and he had tricked his father. Jacob didn't say, "I'm gonna put on my gloves with Esau, and we're gonna go toe to toe, and we're gonna see what it do." Jacob said, "You know what? Uh, I'm gonna take my mama's instructions, and I'm gonna go run to my uncle Laban. I ain't really about that life. I don't really want to fight. I, I, I don't. So this is not something that we see that is." common with Jacob. We see that Jacob, he, he runs then and then when he gets to Laban's house and he, he, uh, he, he goes through his service in Laban's house, he stays there for almost 14 years and then he transitions. He gets what he needs and he says, you know what? I'm going to run again. I'm tired of Laban's house. Jacob is not somebody that we see that is constantly in a battle. I'm run. I, 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 you know what? I don't like this city, so I'ma leave. I don't like this church, so I'ma leave. You didn't offended me. You know what? Y'all got too much going on, so I'm gonna leave. I'm not used to fighting. I'm used to running. So what happens is I run instead of putting up a fight. I run instead of putting up a fight. And 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 sometimes sometimes prophetess Terry here when, when, when we are getting to a place where God is really trying to use us, uh, sometimes we have to say, I won't back out of this. Uh, I'm not going to throw it in. Uh, I'm going to put up a good fight. Uh, I'm going to burn. I'm going to put my boxing gloves on uh, and I'm going to fight until it's over and I can't fight no more. Uh, I'm not going to let the sickness take my body out. Uh, I'm not going to let depression have my mind. Uh, I'm not going to let my spirit be low. Uh, I'm going to put up a good... Uh, the old saints used to say a good fight of faith. I'm on fight. 
I'm going to fight until I ain't got no fight left in me. I'm not going to let you take me out of here. I'm not going to let the depression wear my mind down. I'm not going to let the fact that the money ain't meeting the bills get me to a place to where I don't care anymore. I don't care what it looks like. I know the relationship is under attack. I know the friendship is under attack. I understand that the money is not there. But I'm not going to get to a point where I give up. I'm not going to run. I'm going to fight. I just need about three people to say fight. Jacob finds himself. I tell you. Jacob finds himself in the battle of his life. Jacob, he has, he went to his uncle Laban, running from Esau. And he stayed there and served Laban for 14 years. So he served seven for Sarah. Uh, for he served seven for Rachel and then served another um, seven for Leah. He probably could have left Leah there if he had asked him, but he already had put his time in. So he went ahead and if you know the story, you understand what I mean. But he went ahead and he said, I put my time in. So go ahead and give me that that I have served for and let me go about my business. And so he gets to a place where he is has made up in his conscious mind that he's getting ready to go back home. Now, when you understand the pretense of the story, you understand that Jacob stole his brother's ba birthright. He tricked his father. He, he was a swindler. He had did a whole bunch of stuff where he had left off apostle, and he didn't want to return back because Esau said, you know what? Next time I see you, bro, it's your head. I'm going to take your head off the block next time I see you because you, you, you know what? You tried it. You, 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 you thought I was, you thought I was going, you thought you was going to play with me here. So next time I see you it, 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 on sight. On sight. On sight. I'm frustrated on sight. Next time I see you, it's on sight. Because you didn't stole from me. I'm just talking about the scripture, y'all. I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't, I don't know about that. I'm just talking about the word of God. He say, See you. So Jacob, he, he's been away 14 years. He says, I'm going to go back. And he goes back. And on the way there, while he's running, he gets in the wilderness. How many of you know the body of Christ as a whole at large is in the wilderness? We are in uncharted territory this morning. It ain't no book for this. It ain't no strategy. You can't study your way out of what we going on in the body of Christ. You can't. It ain't no planning. You got, you know, when the pandemic came in, it put such a pretense and it left such a, such a spirit in the church to where you can't study. It ain't no method to get through this. You can't navigate through this with a, a, a study guide and a text. The only way that you're going to navigate through this is through prayer. You're going to have to get fresh instructions. You're going to have to be the generation and say, we wrote the book uh, because it was a season that I didn't know how to get through, so I had to lay on my face until God gave me instructions. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. It ain't no way. It ain't no instructions for it. Ain't no way. We gotta. We have to be in a place of consecration and, and pray, and I'm not going to jump ahead of myself. And so um, one thing that Jacob does when he gets into the battle is he asks the question. He asks, and if you paid attention when I was reading the text, he asks the question several times, what is your name? 
they can say, what's your name? Because I'm, I'm already in this wilderness. I'm running for my life, frustrated, scared, anxiety, everything that's happened to me, uh, the pandemic and all this stuff. And Jacob asked the question, what is your One thing about being in a battle is that you can't confuse where who your adversary is. One thing about being in a battle, and this is my first point of the text, you got to know who your real enemy is. Some of us trying to fight against each other. We trying to battle against the, 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 the family. And you trying to battle against your coworker. Your coworker is not really the real enemy. There are two kingdoms that we that live in this realm. The first kingdom is the kingdom of light, and the second kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. You either on one side or the other. I'm not fighting my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not fighting in my relationship. I'm not fighting in my friendship. I'm not fighting against uh, 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 the, 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 the person on my job. I'm fighting against an adversary that had developed a tactic uh, to separate and divide. You got to know who your real enemy is. Uh, there is an enemy after your assignment, and you got to know who it is. We can't fight each other. <laughs> We can't fight each other. We can't be fighting one another. We can't be fighting our family. Yeah, my sister just get on my nerve. I can't stand her. I, you know, uh, my brother, you know, he always got problems. Uh, you got to understand that your brother is being enslaved. Uh, he's enslaved to a taskmaster uh, that don't belong to him. Uh, and he is in a battle himself. Uh, so we got to understand uh, that the fight is real really huh, not against the person huh, but against that kingdom we fighting the wrong people we fighting the wrong people look at somebody that look like they gonna get offended when you talk to them and say you not my enemy I, I, I said look I need a church say look at somebody and say you not my enemy I, you ain't the reason I'm fighting. You're not my problem. You ain't the one that's causing the, 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 the situation. The enemy is really the, the, the devil. He's really after our, who God. Yeah, I can't jump ahead of myself, but uh, the enemy, and we have to know who our enemy is. If you know who your enemy is, you don't get it misconstrued. You don't, you don't, you don't get lost. You don't take you. So what happens when the spirit of offense comes in? It's because you haven't identified who your real enemy is. So you think it's a person and you don't realize that it's a tactical approach by the enemy to separate, divide and conquer. It's not. It's just, it, it, I got to know who I'm fighting against. I got to know. It ain't it ain't it ain't it, it's not my brother. It's not my sister. It ain't my husband. It ain't my wife. It's not my children. The enemy is trying to divide and conquer. It's a tactical approach. It's two kingdoms, and the kingdoms are at war. So he's using situations, predicaments to create adversaries in hook, Osaya, in familiar faces. I'll use the familiar face to create an adversary in because the familiar face, you're going to be a little bit easier for me just to go ahead and get all the way in my flesh and go off because you're familiar. You familiar, it's easy for me to tell you off. Yeah, it's easy. You, 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 you know I'm holding on with everything. You, 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 you know. You know what it is. So it's easy for me to just tell you, 
be taken and he turns them and puts an enemy in his envelope. Sometimes you have to realize that the enemy is lying on the inside of you. You have allowed, and not not just you, but I'm going to look at parents first. I've allowed my trauma and my experiences and everything that I've went through and all the hurt from the pandemic and the fact that the bills ain't adding up and the fact that I'm hurt because I had to bury my grandmother and I had to bury my child and I had to bury my loved one. The fact that I went through a divorce, I'm letting the enemy, that what happens is when, when, when love and passion and hurt and trauma are not placed at the correct t- in, in the correct place, they turn into an internal adversary because I didn't take what I was going through to prayer, because I didn't take it and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, uh, that thing got on the inside of me and set up infection. Uh, it set up infection and now uh, I'm coming and you see me but I'm bitter. Uh, I'm coming and you see me but I'm angry. Uh, I'm coming and you see me uh, but there's something on the inside uh, that's warring in me uh, and I can't get peace of mind. Sometimes the enemy that we are battling is yourself. It's the enemy. He didn't set that thing up so in your mind to where you think everybody is against you. He didn't set that. He didn't put so much condemnation. He didn't put so much condemnation and guilt on you to where every time you come in contact with somebody, you be like, is she looking at me? Is he looking at me? What they done done? I feel deliverance breaking in this house. You are trying to figure out what are they doing? Are they... uh, are they talking about me? I know, and you know what? I didn't heard it when I when I left the room. I know y'all was talking about me when I left. I know I heard what y'all said. Yeah, that's that thing on the inside that then started warring against you, and it's causing turmoil. It's the inner. It's the inner. In the enemy, in the inner me. That's what it is. And you gotta learn that if I'm a walk in God, I gotta put a sword on it. I'm not going to let what's on the inside of me take me out of here. I'm going to fall out. My old pastor used to say, you got to fall out with your wicked ways. I ain't going to let it rob me. I'm going to fall out with them. I'm going I'm to I'm pull a sword on myself and I'm going to say, you know what? There's a problem internally with me. I'm a, because you know what? This, this, this Bible, it gives us a reflection according to how we should live and walk. And I, 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 I got enough of it on the inside of me that sometimes, Marcus, I look and I say, this is wrong in me. It's something on the inside of me that ain't lining up with his word. It's something on the inside of me that's contrary to my destiny and I know it's nobody else but it's me just say self-evaluation the first thing I gotta understand is who's my real enemy the second thing I'm talking about those who have been in a good place. The second thing I got to know is if I'm going to be in a battle and I made up my mind to fight, I got to know where the next fight is going to be. I got to know where my adversary is. I got to know I got to know where he weak at. Because where he weak at, that's where my blow needs to hit. 
If, if I'm going to be able to win this battle, that, that I need to be able to attack him where uh, he's weak at. I can't come at him from the strong side. If his left side, the strong side, then I need to come at him. I need to be able to counteract. I need to be able to see and say, okay, I know where you're strong at, so let me come at you from the other side. Uh, because if I get it, if I hit you from your strong spot, you might take me out of here. Huh? So what I got to do is I got to know Know where you are weak at. Yeah, I gotta know. I gotta know where you're weak at. I, I gotta know what's gonna take you out of this fight. I'm talking about being in a good fight. You know, if you, if you, if you, I feel the Holy Ghost on me, y'all. Huh? Jesus. If, 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 if. I touch her body and I afflict her body with affliction and I let some test results come back negative, I, I know that's enough to really take her off her center. If I, if you know what, if I start messing with her children, I know that's enough to really knock her off the sinner. If I start messing with his job and I start causing problems in his job, I know that's enough to really get me off focus. You got to know that where you have to know where the weak spot is because the enemy is paying attention to your weak spot. How do I battle? I, he touched him in the hollow of his hip. How? Do I know and battle the enemy in his weak spot? The first thing that we have to have is if you're going to be in a fight with the devil, if you're going to be in a fight, you know, some people don't say, oh, don't say the devil, don't say, if you're going to be in a, uh, let me be scripturally correct, if you're going to be in a fight with the kingdom of darkness, if you're going to be in a fight with the kingdom of darkness, the first thing that we have to do, Shamika, is we have to have prayer and fasting. We got to be in prayer. We can't do it in the natural. We can't do it in our intellect. We can't do it in our mind. We have to do it by way of prayer and fasting. The Bible says when, 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 when they went to cast the demon out and they asked uh, Jesus, they say, Jesus, uh, why didn't the demon flee? He said, them kind only come by way of prayer and fasting. There's some warfare that's not going to break off your life until you put your flesh under subjection. Oh, you, you, we don't, we, the, the 21st century church don't, hit, don't like that type of talk, but until you turn your plate over and deny your body a little bit and get in your and get up at 5 o'clock and put your flesh under subjection. Some things you're not going to see break off. You're trying to navigate it through your intellect and it's deceiving you. The Spirit of God got to be strong. The Bible says that I build myself up in my, my most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. I am led by the Spirit of God. I'm not led by what I think, my experiences, what I went through. I'm led by the Spirit of God. And he leads me when I put my flesh under subjection. There are certain elements and dominions and di dimensions and things that we can't access until we learn how to go back to the altar and put our flesh under subjection. Uh, you run in the we, you, you see, what, what has happened is a time to the behold. There's an idolatry that has crept into the body of Christ as a whole. Uh, and what we're doing is we have made, we have become so self-glorified uh, in my own desires uh, that I don't care uh, what the will of the Lord is for my life anymore. Um, uh, that don't matter. I just want to please my flesh. And I know this is not a possible uh, 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 like gospel, but I won't turn my plow. We got to put our flesh under subjection if I'm on fight. I can't be led by my feelings. I can't be led by my emotion. I can't be led by my experience. I got to let my spirit lead me. And that means that there are some elements in me that I'm going to have to put on the altar. 
there, there are some elements of me that I'm going to have to put on the altar. Turn with me. Turn, turn, turn with me. Those of you all who get, we, we're going we're gonna to teach from the Bible today. We're teaching from the word, the scriptures. Turn, turn, those of you all have your Bibles, I want you to get, um, let's see, John, John chapter 12, verse 24. preach the gas. John chapter 12 verse 24 and I'm going to read from the message that says listen carefully unless a seed of wheat is buried in the ground dead to the world it is very uh, is never any more than a grain of wheat um, but if it is buried it sprouts and produces itself many times over in the same anyone who holds on to life as it is as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go reckless in your love, you'll have forever real and eternal love. There are elements of us. And so in the process of germination, the embryo is buried in the ground and it has to die. It ha it's a death process. And what happens is that in order for the seed to live, uh, an element of it has to die. So what Jacob does is uh, he is getting ready when he encounters the angel. Uh, he's wrestling with the element of himself uh, that has to die. Uh, oh, good God from Zion. Uh, there are some things in me uh, that I have to die if I wanted to live. Uh, if I'm going to birth out the business... Uh, if I'm going to be a millionaire, if I'm going to launch the vision, if it's going to live, there's some things in me that got to die. It's a, it's a death process. Some, some, some stuff I got to say, I can't let that live. Israel and Jacob can't live at the same time. Israel and Jacob can't live at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> There's some things that I got to pull a sword on that got to die. If I want the next, if I want to die in where I'm at, if I want to be okay with where I'm going through, then you know what? I don't have to pull a sword on myself. I, if I want to be stagnant in the job that I'm in, if I want to be stagnant in the relationship that I'm in, if I want to be stagnated, then I, it's not required of me. But if I want something else, if I want what God wants for my life, if I want the glory of God to be used in me, if I want the Father to be edified, I got to pull a sword and say, uh, it's me. Kill yourself. The next thing that I got to really emphasize on prayer and fasting obedience. If you, it don't make no, it, it, it doesn't benefit anything for you to hear the word on Sunday and listen to it and then go home and not, not obey what God is saying. It doesn't make any sense for you to read the scriptures and then go back out and do contrary to everything you've been taught. If you don't have a level of obedience, you are not a threat to the enemy. You can't obey. You can hear, but you can't obey. So what happens is you don't profit anything. You don't see a reproduction. Huh? Your fruit never breaks the seal huh? because you know, you can listen huh? but you can't obey. Huh? The Bible says, huh? believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Huh? There's a level according to the word that you hear huh? that causes your life huh? to prosper. You got to obey. You, you can't, we have to, we got to say I know it's I know it's wrong. I'm talking about the scroll that I eat first. I gotta, you know what? I don't want to do it. 
I don't really, I, honestly, I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. But because of what he's calling for my life, I got to obey. The next weak spot that I want to deal with is sometimes you have to know how to outlast the enemy. How many times did he say, let me go? How many times did he say, it's almost daybreak. I need you to let me go. How many times you you have to know sometimes when you come against certain levels of warfare, uh, you got to know how to outlive it. Uh, it ain't going to go nowhere. Uh, it ain't nothing you can do about it at the time. Uh, sometimes we just need to outlive it. Uh, it's called long suffering. Uh, God, give me another level of long suffering. Uh, teach me how to endure through this, uh, through this hurt, uh, through this heartache, uh, through this frustration. Uh, you got to know uh, how to outlive the enemy. The scripture says that the enemy came to Jesus for a season and then he left. He ain't going to stay there. You ain't going to be, you ain't going to forever be bound in that. It's only for, you going to come out of it. I promise you, it's not going to last forever. The hurt ain't going to last forever. The trauma not going to last forever. The heartache ain't going to last forever. You just got to be able to hold on uh, long enough. <laughs> you got to be able to hold on uh, until it break. <laughs> you got to be able to hold on uh, until you can't hold on anymore. <laughs> I refuse to let you go. There are about three people in him that are going through battles in your body. You're going through battles in your mind. You're going through battles in your ministry. You're going through battles in your head. There's warfare in your finances, and you just feel like throwing in the towel. But I came all the way through heartache and breakup to tell you, hold on a little while longer. It's getting ready to break. Hold on a little while longer. The enemy is getting getting wore out. Just keep holding on a little while longer. Hold on until he until he say, let me go. I'm going to hold on until he say, I'm tired of wrestling with you. I'm going to hold on because there's something that I got to get out of me. I'm going to win, if I'm a win, I got to let Jacob go. I got to let Jacob go. Some, I got to let him. I can't let Jacob live. Jacob was a swindler. Ja Jacob will cuss you out. Jacob will fight you. J J J J J J Jacob, will, Jacob, Jacob will sneak you. He'll catch, he'll sneak you. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll do it. And if I'm going to fight, I got to be able to let Jacob die. Somebody say, Jacob got to die. Somebody say, Jacob got to die. We all got a Jacob. I got a Jacob. I got a, I got a Jacob, Pastor T. I got a Jacob. There are some elements in me that I got to constantly say, I'm going to I'm going to let you go. One thing about a fight, before, one, before I head there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to my third one. You have to know if you're in a good battle, what is happening? through it just because I'm going through it for a reason. I'm coming into something that I ain't fought over. I'm coming to, it's 
Come and seek me as a king. Just come and seek him as our rock and redeemer. Hope deferred. He's coming for something. If I can, if I can take your present situation and make it so bad that you forget to look to your future and realize that I'm fighting for my future. I'm fighting for, I'm fighting for something else that's on the inside of me. I'm, I got a business that I'm fighting for. I got children on the inside of me that I'm fighting. You got to, you, you got to understand that he's coming. He came for a reason, and you can't forfeit the fight because if you forfeit the fight, Israel gonna die. So now I'm fighting for Israel. I'm fighting for the promises of God that were given to my grandfather and my grandmother. I'm fighting for the businesses that are due to me. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I, I I can't let Israel die on the inside of me. There's something else that God got in me that it's for a nation. There's something in me that is for the deliverance for a community. There's something in me that is worth overturning the kingdom of darkness. Israel has to live. You can't afford to let Israel die on the inside of you. You can't afford to. So I got to put up a fight. I'm going to put up a fight in every area. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to hold on to the altar. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to fast. And I'm going to hold on to the altar. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to fast. And I'm going to hold on to the altar. And then I'm going to pray some more. And then I'm going to fast some more. And then I'm going to hold on to the altar. And then I'm going to, you know what, when it get real, real, real bad right before the last hour, I'm going to pray some more. And I'm going to fast some more. And I'm going to hold on to the altar. And then when it get real, real, real bad and I'm frustrated, I'm going to pray some more, and then I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to worship some more. I'm going to fast some more. I'm going to worship some more, and I'm going to fast some more because I have to get to a place where I don't let this world get me bogged down in my mind by what I see. My mind, it lives in a spiritual place, Pastor Janice. I live in the realm of the spirit. So when things start happening around me, I don't let myself get bogged down by I captivate and I go to a place where the enemy can't reach me yet. Ebony, I go somewhere where he can't find me. You can't find me out here. I'm going to go in the spirit and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship and I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship and I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship until it break. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship until you let me go. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship until Israel comes out of me. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship until the glory of God, until he gets the glory out of my story. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to worship. Say, somebody shout, I'm fighting for Israel. There's something on the inside of you that you're fighting for. He came, he tried to, he, see, 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 he calls in a warfare because he wants you to die as your name, with your name being Jacob. He wants you to die in poverty. Yeah. He wants you to die single. The enemy wants you to die with lack around you. He wants you to die going through it. So what happens is, we, we get to a place where we have an encounter. And God says, at this moment, I'm going to give you a chance to fight for Israel. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance to fight for the destiny that's on your life. I'm going to give you a chance. I hear the Lord say he's coming back for investments. I hear the Lord say he put some stuff down in you when you were going through the hardship and the trials. He put some stuff down on the inside of you when you didn't understand what was going on. When you was trying to make the bills meet. When you was trying to get the 
the children together. When you were trying to make, he put some stuff down on the inside of you during that season that he's getting ready to come back for. And he said, I'm coming back for an investment. I just need to know, are you going to fight? And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to fast. And I'm going to worship. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to fast. And I'm going to worship. And then I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to fast, and then I'm going to worship again, Joy. And then when he think that, and when he leave for a season, guess what? I'm not going to stop praying, and I'm not going to stop fasting, and I'm not going to stop worshiping, because he's going to return again. What is this fight really all about? What did it come after? It came after Israel on the inside of me. Because the next thing that the angel of the Lord tells him, Apostle, he says, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name is no longer affliction. It's no longer sickness. It's no longer swindler. Is no longer hardship. Your name is no longer the disease. The cancer don't live there no more. I hear God in this house. Uh, the, the turmoil no longer lives there anymore. Uh, the contention no longer lives there anymore. Uh, because there was a fight on the inside of you. Uh, and you decided to pull a sword on yourself. Uh, and you decided to pray uh, and fast uh, and worship. Uh, and you decided that you was going to obey my word. Uh, so now this fight on the inside of you uh, is, is, is over over with. Jacob is dead. Tell somebody, Jacob is dead. I just killed Jacob. I just, I just killed Jacob. I just killed Jacob. I just killed him. I just killed him. I just killed, him. I just killed, I just killed Jacob. What is this fight all about? I know what it's about. Come on, somebody help me today. <laughs> if I know what it's about, I'm going to fight it out. Because I know why I'm fighting. Lift your hands up this morning. Lift your hands in this place. We're standing on your feet. you all to slip in worship. Intercessors, I want you to begin to pray because you have some people in here who are fighting for their lives. They're fighting mentally. They're fighting emotionally. They want to give up. It's been heavy. The weights have been heavy. They don't want to come to church. They don't want to pray. They don't even feel like fasting. They say, I ain't got the strength to pray for myself. I don't have the strength to fast. I don't have what it ha I don't I don't have what it takes to do all of that. I, I, I'm at a point right now where I done been wrestling for so long, I'm weak. And that's what we're here for. That's what the body is here for. That's, that, that's our assignment, Shamika. That's our assignment. Vic, that, that's our assignment, Marcus. That's what we do. We stand in the gap and we say, you know what? I know you're tired. I know you're tired of fighting. I know you're tired of holding on. I know you're tired of going through. And I'm not going to let Israel down the inside of you. I'm going to throw you a lifeline and stand in the gap and bust the devil upside the head until he back up off of you. I'm not going to let you, I'm not, I'm not going to let you die in the wilderness. 
I'm not going to let you die right here. If you feel, can we get the ministers and elders to come? Come on up. If you say, Father, I've been in a battle. It's been warfare all around me. I've been hurting. I've been holding on, but I didn't got weary and driven away. This altar is open. The altar is open. For those of you who say, I just need some help fighting. I need some help fighting in my marriage. I need some help fighting in my business. I need some help fighting on my job. I, I just need some help fighting. I, I, I've been doing a good job, but I just need a little help in my battle. Keisha, I just need a little help. I just, I just, I just need, you know what, I, I, I ain't gave up, but I, I just need a little boost. I want you to come to this altar. I want you to come to this altar. And we're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to let the enemy have his way with me. Oh my. Come on, I need you to come to this altar because I feel a move of God getting ready to shift in this house. I feel glory getting ready to shift in this house. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Hey. Glory to your name, God. Father, we come down to this altar and we say, light up, up a blaze, oh God. Light a blaze on this altar and break the chains of bondage off of your people. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Hey. We thank you now, God, that there, there is no court, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. We plead the blood, oh God, the blood over their minds, the blood over their hearts, the blood over their bodies, the blood over their emotions, the blood, oh God, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Every thought of suicide, every thought of give up, every thought of condemnation. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We thank you now, God, that the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding is our portion. In the name of Jesus, let the peace of God hey, I need intercessors. You gotta know how to go in when your church is in transition you gotta know how to take it to a place come on where it's free uh, open up your mouth open up your mouth hey. open up your mouth hey. God break this house open take us to the potter's wheel and break us again oh God Make a fresh vessel out of us. Make a fresh vessel out of us. Renew the joy of my salvation. Bring me back to my first love. Make a joyful noise. I need somebody to holler until it break. I need you to holler until it break. Holler until it break off your mind. Holler until it break off your spirit. He's trying to silence you. Because if it keeps you silent, he can keep you in bondage. I need you to wail out. Wail. Hey. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Yonder of a ho. Hey. Seek yonder of a ho, Oh, yonder of a 
your hand this way as they're still ministering. Lord, thank you. Thank you for trusting us with this gift. Thank you. <laughs> we affirm receive, we accept the ministry of this prophet. Help us, Lord, to make sure he always has room. Help us, Lord, to create a safe space for him to flow in his ministry. Lord, Strengthen him for the call. And don't let any one of his words fall to the ground. Thank you. Thank you for leading him to help us to turn the sword on ourselves. And may this be a birthing. This is the season of release. May he never go back. May he never go back. This graduation season. This is the season to come out of the cave. And we thank you. And we set a hedge of protection around everything concerning Terrence Constantine. We block any vengeful spirits attempting to create war with him for the release in this house today. We cover him. We command the ministering angels to block any demonic attacks. And we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. My God, if you're grateful for the ministry of Terrence Constantine, God. The Lord's still ministering to some of you. My God, my God, my God. The ministry of deliverance is in the room. And uh, you may not have come but I want to tell you, you don't have to leave the same way you came in. Would you say that? Say, I don't have to leave the same way I came in. My goodness. There's a few things I, I'm here to do, but I, I think I'm going to cut some of these out. still in a moment. Um, this is what we want to do. Freedom Church, if, if there's someone here who has not surrendered to Jesus, if you're not letting Jesus lead your life, if you're doing what you want to do and not what Jesus wants you to do, we want to offer you the opportunity to commit to Jesus. Is there anyone in this room that don't know the Lord but want to know him? Is there anyone in this room that 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 doesn't is that's not following the Lord but would like to? Will you if that
that's you, will you lift one hand? You good? All right. Is there anyone here that wants to join the church, who wants to connect to our community? We all know each other or something? You good? Is there anyone finally who wants to rededicate their life to Jesus? You've been, you say, but you've just been doing your own thing for a while. And today you say, I think I won't come back home. Lift your hand if that's you. <laughs> Lift your hand. I see, oh, that's my boy, Rashawn. Rashawn and his fiance, won't y'all come? That's you two, woman of God? Come on down here. Y'all had a friend. I met this young man, Rashawn, several years ago, and he reached out to me. Him and his wife, would all, fiance, would also like to be baptized. Um, I feel some, y'all. I don't, I feel some. Rashawn, give me your fiance's name. Malia, it's good to meet you, woman of God. Come on, y'all. What we need to do is we need to pray. What's your name, woman of God? Sandra, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. Come here. God has turned up the heat these last few years. I hear the Holy Spirit is saying, you knew where to go, but you was just wandering. I hear the Lord say, I'm so happy you came home. Are you a member in any church? You a member here? significant turnaround but it's going to be contingent upon your commitment to stay in place I'm not just talking about the church I hear the Holy Spirit say I've been waiting on you to come home Vicky do you mind praying you, might, you want to pray Mama D it don't matter you will pray we want to pray for her real fast. And I'm going to ask the Lord, there's some things going on in your health that we need good reports for. Receive that healing right there. Receive that healing right there. May the power of the Holy Spirit run from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. May there be an energizing force of, of strength. May I, I want God to recreate every organ that's acting up right now. I release it into you now. I release it into you now. I release it into you now. If you need a healing miracle, lift your hand right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Y'all pray for it. We pray in Jesus' name that those of you are suffering with any manner of blood issue, any manner of dysfunction in your organs, cancer, kidney failure, we, we destroy the works of the devil operating in disease, and I unleash healing in this room. May the power, may the angel of the Lord visit you in your body and in your eyes. I feel some about nervous system. My neck just started tingling. If you've got nervous system issues going on, in Jesus' name, be healed. If you see somebody with their hand lifted up, take one hand and put it on their shoulder and begin to intercede and command their body to be healed. God is about to unleash the working of miracles and the supernatural in this body like never before. And I'm just trying to find out if there's some people who got some faith who can who can agree with me that God's gonna present healing somebody has a doubt if you got a doctor's appointment this week show me who you are lift your hand lift your hand who is it who got a doctor's appointment this week one two three four five six seven good reports between today and Wednesday May God put a new thing in your body and get a new report from the doctor in Jesus. I need somebody in the room. I need somebody in the room to put good reports. If there's something that's been going on, Pastor Janice, 
may the Lord reverse. Some of you got, you got the symptoms. There's something going on. But God, I feel this in my spirit, God is about to regenerate you. He's, he is going to regenerate your body and put some broken stuff, I don't know who I'm preaching to, back together. Whatever has been broken, whatever has been torn, whatever has been bleeding, I command in Jesus' name that God sow some stuff back together. Come here, give me a high five. I'm going to release this on your life. Not just healing, but healing ministry. I put it on you now. 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 I put the mantle of healing on your body. Hey! Listen. The man of God preach. I, <laughs> we've been without miracles too long. been without miracles too long. You've been hiding in your sickness. We got to go home. I just felt something for diabetes. Not only is he going to heal you, but he going to give you the strategy to heal yourself. You hear me? Some of you need a strategy. Terrence is fine. I, you know, I'm saved and silly. It's just God going to give you the strategy. Some of you, and Lord, I'm not trying to overshadow the Terrence preach, okay? But he opened something up in the spirit. S some of you, you're trying to figure out why you're sluggish and why you don't have the energy for your vision. You don't have the energy. So you're fighting two battles. You're fighting an emotional battle because you can't figure out why you don't feel like it. Why? I can't, you can't get your butt off the bed. You can't get moving. But you're fighting an emotional battle and you're fighting a physical battle. God want me to tell you he's about to deal with the physical battle. And once you start feeling better, you'll start actually getting the strength you need to do what God is calling you to do. Some stuff is wearing you out. Some stuff you're not even talking about. And you can't figure out why you're feeling. I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to somebody else. You can't figure out why your body is feeling. You just can't pull yourself together. You're fighting physically and mentally. And I want to tell some black person in this room, go to the doctor. You know you're not feeling good. Faith does not mean you avoid what exists. Go to the doctor. So then we can target it, what's going on and pray about it. God wants you to know what's going on. So when the story is told, when you get the report and we start praying, you can come tell us. Hey, I had this going on in my body and, and the church prayed for me and the Lord turned it. Did he just say that? You have to know your enemy. I'm sorry, y'all. We're supposed to be going home. It's, it's going to get wacky over the next few months. I keep warning you. It's... It's going to be knockdown down drag outs in the house over the next few months. All right? Listen, everybody say, I need you. <laughs> I need you to do this for me. The scriptures, thank you, ministers. Oh, oh, Rashawn. Hey, man, did they pray for you guys? Okay. Pray with them. You got the information? When's the next time we can do a baptism? You want to do it on 5th Sunday, July 31st? Can y'all do it? July 31st, we got a baptism. And then we're going to be doing a wedding. All right, listen. Let's get them ready. Let's get them scheduled. Let's get them plugged in, family, okay? Real briefly, we got to do a few things. Uh, uh, one next thing, okay. Offering. All right. Listen, friends. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, and where we at? All right. Let's, let's do it. Listen. Bishop Jake said this years ago, he said, feed what's feeding you. Y'all here still? In the back, you hear me? Somebody say, feed what's feeding you. People don't think giving works anymore. 
teachers, they don't, they don't think, they don't think tithing and offering and giving works anymore. So they don't trust God with it. They say, no, Lord, no, Lord, this ain't, this don't work. This giving thing don't work. I gave two times and nothing happened. And in fact, when I gave, thing, bad things happened in my life. So I'm not going to do it no more. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says this. Each of you should give what you have planned in your heart to give, but not under force. But for God loves a cheerful, hilarious, joy, excited giver. Friends, we're no longer going to rush the offering and the giving because it's a part of worship. You know, we get up here, somebody get up here and say, cash out freedom, cash a check, website. No, 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 no. We're still in worship. This is a part of our worship. So Mama Shirley and Sister Mel has some envelopes, and I'm hoping that you not just come in covenant with Freedom Church, but come in covenant with God and say, Lord, I will be a tither and a giver. And I'm not going to give it and not be happy about it. If you read down verse 8, he says, for God is able to make all sufficiency abound toward you at all times, and you'd have everything you need for a good work. God is going to use your giving to make sure you never run out of provision. Y'all not helping me. When you and, and for all my presiders, we're gonna have this meeting later. We're not rushing the offering, and we're gonna pray, we're gonna pray in offering time. We want to identify, we want those of you who are not afraid to say, it, it, whether it's two dollars, ten, twenty, I feel an anointing here. I got an, I have a prophetic anointing for this house in this season. May God raise you up. Who, who, I'm gonna, I want you to call out your number. I ain't going to say nothing. You call it out according to your conviction. If you could give today and had no limitations, what would you give? May God raise you up. May God raise you up. If this ministry, this church is giving you life, it's a good season to sow. Our founding apostle, prophetess, labored. There's an anointing in here, whether it was me or you. you anybody could step in this anointing because of their last 20 years of labor. This is good ground. Thank you, Troy. I see you. you know. I only got one clap in the back. All my claps up in the front. If you have your offering or if you've given it electronically, please wave your hand in the air. Keep that hand. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you that you've given us in order to give. Thank you, Lord, that this is good ground. And because of our faith and covenant in you, we shall receive seed, more seed to sow. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have a sufficiency for every good work. And may the blessing of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow. I announce a season of toilless winds. I release it upon these givers, upon these tithers, upon these offering givers. God, I ask you to let them come into a season of winds without fights. We give you praise and thanks. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen and give him a praise. If you have it in your hand, you can please stand. We have receptacles here. Come and bring it. I'm going to do the announcements while you're giving, and, and we're going to press on through worship. Thank you so much for enduring with us. Sometimes God going to do something we can't, we, can't, we can't stop him, all right? All right, real briefly, uh, announcements that you're giving here. Pay attention to me. Let me find the one. All right, here we go. A lot of folded papers up here. All right, Pearls and Purpose Gathering. Good. All right, Pearls and Purpose.
the Purpose Gathering. We need you to be there September 16th through 18th. Registration is $35. Apostle Yolanda Stitt, Apostle John Amico, that's family. Apostle Tiffany Bingham, that's family. And Tamisha Pruitt Ray, that's my friend. Here at Freedom International, put it on your calendar, September 16th through the 18th, the Pearls and Purpose Gathering. I'm going to find me some pearls. I'm just playing. Number two, listen, friends, I was invited this past Saturday for corporate prayer. Who was on corporate prayer Saturday? Did you sense the presence of God on corporate prayer? My last sentiments on the first Sunday was the next season is going to be called what? Prayer, patience, and love. We got to be not just a worshiping church. We're a praying church. If It is important. Hear me clearly. I don't, those of us who are on the call, who lead the call, don't need you on the call to make us feel better. Because we're going to pray whether you come or not. Your soul needs to be on this call. Just like your soul needs to be in worship. Your soul needs to be on this call. If I were you right now, I would add the number in your phone and put it on your calendar. Put it on your calendar and make sure you get a reminder. You get a reminder and longs for everything else. Get a reminder. I listen y'all Prayer still works, and we, we, we encourage you, we strongly urge you to connect with us in prayer. Is that cool? All right. Her Encounter 2022, Saturday, August 13th. Our own prophetess, Lady Janice Gentry, will be preaching in the house. It's going to be Saturday, August 13th at 8.30 a.m. I strongly encourage you to connect this woman of God. This woman of God is a pioneer, prophetess. She got a word in her belly, and, and it's going to be, it's just going to be good. It's going to be good. Somebody say, mm, mm good. And finally, I'm going to ask that all, hear me clearly, all dream team, lift, sanctuary servants, all y'all, whoever work in, in this church, meet me briefly for 20 minutes. I know you're hungry. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to make it worth your while. Just meet me here in the front after worship is over so that we can talk a little bit. We're in transition. Our apostle and prophetess have afforded me the opportunity to serve you guys for the next few months. And I'm going to serve you with love. I'm going to serve you with patience. I'm going to serve you with prayer. Is that all right? In fact, what I would like for you to do is as he's making his exit, and, and acknowledge, please, Apostle and Lady Janice. Come on, acknowledge them. We're here because of them. You got a place to worship right now because of them. You feel better about your walk with God because of them. They will always be honored. They will always be respected. They will always be lifted up because you cannot sell deliverance. I'll preach later. Today was Terrence's day. All right. Do I have any first-time guests? Rashawn and say your name again. Malaya. Come on, clap for my friends, y'all. All right, Terrence, I'm supposed to do the benediction, but you just did so well. I want you to do the benediction today. Come on. Don't forget. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing. Guys, Jeremy, come with me. Boo. <laughs> Lawrence, come to me, bro. Friends, come, come here, man. I almost said, made me say something in church. Friends, our church has been in significant transition. And, and, and for those of you who are struggling to battle with it, please don't struggle by yourself. <laughs> We're still a family. And so, of course, uh, two Sundays ago, we announced this transition. Some of you, this is very fresh. And then Deron, and, and with great sadness, I hand the mic to Jeremy. <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing this. <laughs> um, but since 2019, um, when I came here officially, I had the honor and the privilege to serve as the brother Deron Garrett, 
this amazing ministry. I was going to say, yeah, I'm going to say it how I feel. This amazing freak of nature. Because if you, if, if I, before the huddles, I mean, before, before service, if you've ever sat in our huddles, this man plays some stuff that is otherworldly. And if there's never, ever been anyone who possesses the sound of the kingdom of God, it definitely rests on Lawrence Fleets. And so can we just take a moment and honor him and love on him? Would you? Come on, y'all. From 2017. From, from 2017 to 2022, Lawrence Freaks has embodied the sound of freedom. And we're so grateful for it. And so it is with great sadness that I, I announced this Sunday. Now, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> um, that this is Lawrence Creek's last Sunday playing with us on Friday night. Um, but we want to take this time um, and replace our tears of sadness with tears of joy. And we want to love on him. Can we love on him? It's an awesome assignment to sit here and to bob and weave prophetically um, and usher in the presence of God uh, through music week after week. And so we honor you. We love you. Saw that? We love you and we appreciate you. And if you would tell us what your cash app is, we want to bless you. Amen? Um, what, what is your cash app? Got to put it on the screen. What is it? What is, what is it? He's taking forever, so if somebody knows it, that we got it. Can you put it on the screen for you, for me, please? And I'm gonna ask you um, to please take a moment and consider prayerfully and so um, you're sowing into good ground. You are so into the truth. Thank you so much. Um, she's helpful. Thank you so much. It's the dollar sign E L J U N Y A. El Junior. Can you put it on the screen for me? Thank you so much. One more time while we're waiting. Do dollar sign E L J U N Y A. There we go. El Junior. We appreciate you, Lawrence Creeks, legit. And uh, thank you so much for all of your service, and I pray that God blesses you in your next endeavor. Love you. Come on, come on, guys. Hey, let's, let's, let's load it up. Let's load it up. Let's load it up. Let's load it up. It's good ground. It's good ground. Love you, man. Thank you, man. All right. Terrence, you want know, because we need to go. Lift, dream team. I promise it'll be worth it. I gave six of my minutes of my time away, so I, I need 14 of yours. Meet me down here in the front, all right? Prophet. Please. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you so much, Lord. I appreciate this house. Um, how many of y'all know this man? Like, this church, we, we, we family. We didn't fought together. We didn't cry together. We didn't been there for each other through some hard times. And one thing about family is you might not always agree. Sometimes you might get upset. But at the end of the day, you still family. And that's where we are here. We, we family, group. Marvin, we family, man. Always far spent. Um, so if you can rest on your feet so we can benefit. 
if I can release one last word over you and let you know that you're going to make it through this. You're going to make it through you're going to make it through this. You're not going to die in this. You're going to make it through this. You're going to make it through. Because it's a good fight on the inside of you. Father, we thank you. Lift your hands in this place. Father, we thank you for the presence of your glory. We thank you that you have met us in a place now, Father. We, I ask that you allow the word to fall on good ground. I, I, let you, I ask that you allow the seed of your word to fall on good ground. Father, we come against every buzzard, every thorn that would come to choke it out, God, and we ask that it take root, oh, Father God, and produce in due season. Uh, now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, uh, keep back every hurt, harm, every danger. I bind tickets, mechanical failures, flat tires, and I release the word of the Lord over your life. I thank you that grace and mercy will follow you on your jobs all week long. Grace and mercy will follow you in your daily business all week long. I thank you for the joy of the Lord that combats every sorrow that you got going on. And as you leave this place, I pray the fullness of God's joy be in your life. And we ask these and other blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, the Christ. Amen. Amen. I believe uh, Pastor Terrence wants to meet all the leaders up the front so don't run out. Live free.